Thank you all. We're, we're back again. You recall last week that we did promise you that the conversation on um, the imminent uh, epidemic, if it's not here, but can, is hitting the nation, uh, that is drug abuse and um, other substances that is eating fast into the fabric of the society, that we will continue that conversation. So we're back here again. And this week on Bridges, what we'll be doing is uh, how do we tackle this problem? Agreed that we have the presidential task force in place and um, also living on the promise of Mr. President who says he would not want to leave Nigeria with a problem at the conclusion of his tenure. So all that is in place. Uh, but uh, some school of thought are saying that we cannot leave it to government alone. And this is why on last week's episode we promised that we'll take this drug conversation further to, well, I can't say a conclusion, but that, that leaves room for us to build a solid bridge that will ensure that we can indeed have a society that is drug free. Well, so uh, continuing the discussion with us as it I mean, with the nation, as it were, is uh, to my immediate right, Mr. Naligu Ame, NDLEA. You're welcome again on the program. My pleasure. Yeah, and this time, rich. thank you. And this time, we said we must bring in um, a clinician, a psychiatrist that works with people who unfortunately uh, have themselves hooked on these drugs. And so I'd like to welcome Dr. Ada Ikeako who's thank a psychiatrist, you thank me. you, thank you again <laughs> for coming. And of course from, uh, from around and one that has been working as it were to ensure that we not only contain but that we are able to bring forward uh, what is needed as a people and as a nation to ensure that those that have been affected by this can also become responsible citizens of the country. And so welcome with me, Mr. Zion Ame. Uh, you're also welcome again. Thank and you thank you for the good work you're doing out there in the field. Thank now, you we'll con let's, who do we start with this time? Right. OK. <laughs> <laughs> Let, let's, go, let's go to the clinic. Yeah. OK. Right. Now, what do you see? People yeah. assume that we probably uh, we don't have a serious issue at mm -hmm. hand. But what do you see? Well, we're seeing, um, one thing we're seeing is more women with drug addiction, you know, and that, that tallies with the uh, United Nations Drug and Crime Force report that says one of every five women uh, who, are, who is a, one of every five people in Nigeria who's addicted is a woman. You know, so we're seeing more of that. What, another thing we're seeing is a lot more of uh, childhood trauma, mm -hmm. you know, so we're seeing people that have been assaulted when they were young were, uh, you know, seeing um, people that have had emotional, you know, and different types of abuse. Some people have missed out on certain psychosexual stages of development mm -hmm. where, where f you know, because of death, bereavement, poverty, you know, they've had dis a disrupted childhood. We're seeing thrill-seeking, you know, so our young people are looking for a new experience. You know, some of them are bored and they want to feel, you know, uh, good about themselves. We're seeing a lot of peer pressure you know, so uh, a lot of people that uh, start drugs was because somebody they looked up to, you know, was using, and so you know they were introduced, and they said, "Why, why not?" And they didn't, they didn't decide to be addicted. They didn't realize it would lead to a lifelong uh, mm -hmm. pattern of addiction. So th these are certain trends, you know, that, that we're seeing right now. Right now. Yeah. So, what do you think? As an immediacy that is needed, because we truly, truly have people yeah. who have addiction. Uh, or who have been addicted to some of these drugs, some considered licit, mm -hmm. but when overused, and some still. So where do we go with this? Okay, thank you very much. You see, um, it's already, I mean, done on us, right, as a nation, that uh, there is a problem, mm -hmm. particularly with respect or to, to the context of this conversation right now, mm -hmm. drug uh, use, drug uh, abuse, drug dependence, mm -hmm. and then the likes of it. So I think one of the, one of the major things that is needed right now is that we face this menace, this epidemic head on and provide solutions. And solutions here are referred to treatment. That there, there must be a conscious effort and investment, right, by our leaders, by the government, by the society itself, 
to see how we can together, right, approach this, this, this concern. Because uh, not only is it uh, affecting the, 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 the productivity of the nation, mm -hmm. but it has become a serious health problem mm -hmm. for the users and those who are already depending on it. Mm -hmm. So it, it is, it is a, a serious matter that calls for urgent action. Urgent. And the action is there should be a way out for treatment. For treatment. So we, we need treatment. Uh, in speaking to treatment, uh, uh, there's also the need for to have rehabilitation centers. Well, we, I, I'll just please put that on. We would, that flashlight would, would you know will speak to that mm. treatment and providing a neighboring environment Fantastic. where treatment can be given. Uh, as NDLA, what are you see? What are the trends? How do we curb? Uh, you know, how do we reduce, for example, the sales? Uh, what kind of Reiki are you doing? What, uh, what be, because you can't, I mean, these are things that you can buy agree. on the streets. I agree, I agree. Uh, of course, for every, any, any, any substance to be used or even abused, it will depend on availability. Mm. And so that's what you're asking. Yeah, that's yeah, it. So how come these things are readily available? Uh, studies from the UNODC report and other studies will tell you again that cannabis sativa, or what we call the Igbo, remains the most prevalent. Mm. And the, 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 the reason is that uh, the Nigerian soil is very fertile for it. It's cultivated in commercial quantities in several communities. So it is, it's, it's easy and it's affordable. That's, that's a challenge. So for us in NDLA, what are we supposed to be doing? Every mechanism we put in place, sustainably put in place to check supply to check availability. And do you have uh, the capacity to do that? Capacity. Well, uh, because Nigeria is vast. NDLA, mm. NDLA has cried for several years, and that's why I keep saying, like I said last week, I still say it again, that the UNODC report or the information as provided by PASEDA is only to collaborate what NDLA has been crying about. NDLA does not, the, the manpower, by thank God, federal government has approved and the process is ongoing for recruitment of additional 5,000 staff. But I, I tell you, by the time the 5,000 comes on board, NDLA will see beyond 10,000 nationally in terms of staff strength. So, uh, 774 local companies in Nigeria and with a staff strength of about just 5,000. So, that, 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 that tells you about the capacity to... So, in terms of surveillance, we might not be yes, able but, to... Yes, but it's not to say that uh, NDLA is not... Uh, running around and doing his best. As a matter of fact, thank God for uh, our counterparts and our collaborators. There's an ongoing area survey of forests in Nigeria where cannabis is cultivated. And so we are believing that by the time we have a pictorial intelligence about where these things are available, and we go to the truth, we might be able to make more impact than we are making. Mm -hmm. But as it is now, the well, best we are doing may not be enough. But we are okay. trying. Right. I'll, I'll come back to Dr. Ada quickly. And we, we need to at least help Nigerians watching us. Outside the cannabis, 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 cannabis yeah, sorry. Yeah. Outside the cannabis, yeah. what other drugs are you are Nigerians um, addicted to? Okay, what we're seeing more is uh, poly, you know, uh, poly addiction. Mm. You know, so on average, we're seeing when someone comes in, they have, they're addicted on at least three or more drugs at the same time. So that's the trend. Mm. You know, it's, it's, so it's not it, about just one? No, it's, no. Not, it's not just about one drug. You know, according to the uh, United Nations Drug and Crime Report, they talked about uh, uh, opiates, mm -hmm. codeine and mm -hmm. tramadol, mm -hmm. as being a huge problem in Nigeria, you know, and then marijuana as well. But we see a lot of nicotine. You know, we see, we're seeing more of cocaine as well. Um, you know, injectables. Uh, yes. uh, some 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 injectables. We have pethidine, pentazosine opiates mm -hmm. that are being injected. Those are the commonest that, that that we're seeing. How do they get them? You know, some of them are still able to get them from the pharmacies. I'm sorry to say. I mean, these are supposed to be controlled substances that you can't get without a doctor's prescription. Mm -hmm. But but some pharmacies, when they have a relationship with you, are still issuing. You know, people that are not, you know, you know, prescribed, how, or how, they're getting how, people how, to prescribe illicitly. Yes. You know, as, to, as, to as a matter of fact, yes. as a matter of fact, we we have had opportunities to discuss 
with members of the Brunswick Society of Nigeria. Mm -hmm. And uh, there are leakages in the system. These drugs are supposed to be administered or sold only on doctor's prescription. Mm -hmm. But what do you find in most pharmacies? Yes, probably in the cities like Abuja, you may be able to find. But there are several shops that are supposed to be pharmaceutical shops in Nigeria that have only the sales boy. The pharmacist is not there. <laughs> so, what is what, what, the, the sales person has a task in. How much did you make at the end of this day? Mm -hmm. And so it's not going to be, but he's not an expert. He's not going to be bothered about insisting on. He probably doesn't yeah. recognize. And as a matter of fact, at instances where we have tried to look into uh, the poison book or the form K, mm -hmm. they were very deficient in, in documentation. Yeah, somebody will say, oh, those things were taught just for in the advances for us to be able to pass. So when you have this kind of leakages, that's why you will still find these opioids. Mm -hmm available where they're not supposed to be. I, I, I would like to also add, right, that uh, we, we begin to also see the light of uh, demand reduction, where, where these users uh, are being reached with uh, an, uh, maybe, maybe uh, a better knowledge about mm -hmm. these drugs that they're using, where they are being sensitized, where they are being better informed. You In know, that, 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 that will help. Campaign. Yes, you know, and, and this, this, can, this, can, they, they, this can be done through a multi-sectoral approach, where mm -hmm. different stakeholders can be, can be given reasons why they have to step into this uh, campaign, why they have to also use their agencies, use their ministries, to push out messages, mm -hmm. ministry of information, get jingles, get, 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 I mean, just reach out the public so that they can be better informed about some of these drugs, some of these substances that they are using or abusing or even, you know, probably depending on. Yeah, I really like what, you know, both, uh, both uh, gentlemen are, are saying. We have to look at it at a, as a multi-pronged approach. We have mm -hmm. to look at the risk factors mm -hmm. and we have to target each of the risk factors. Uh, addiction is a disease that starts in childhood from the between the ages of 12 and 17 that's when most people get addicted so and that's when people are getting into secondary school mm -hmm. maybe uh you know jss you get them that young yes th that's when it starts so by the time you're getting a 25 year old you know he's, he's had maybe nine eight ten years of addiction under his belt by that time it's a different disease than when it was early so we have to have that conversation you know of prevention you know, and primary prevention, you know, we can't just, you know, because it's a chronic relapsing disease, mm -hmm. you know, with, with vulnerability for life once you get to that point mm -hmm. of, uh, right. of addiction, mm -hmm. yeah. you know. And so, you know, if we don't talk about prevention, then we can't really look, look at it, you know, strategically. We have to have school programs where young people can, you know, talk to their counselors and to their teachers, look, I'm being offered this. Mm -hmm. Parents have, uh, you know, what, what, what the parental bond has to be strong enough mm -hmm. for the children to be able to come to us. If somebody's offering me this, what do I do, dad? What do I do, mom? You know, support for schools, you know, the curriculum has to include that so that you, you, you move with them as they go into university mm -hmm. or into a trade, you know, and they're already aware, they're already sensitized at that, at that level that this is, this is something that you should say no to. And this to. works. I think, I think I, I want to add to it that... Um, the challenge of drug use or dependency is not a federal government affair only. As I speak to you, for well over 10 years, uh, teachings on drug use has been infused into the curriculum of schools. How many of the schools, how many states are, are at the level of implementation? So it's, it's, it's one thing to put these things in the system. I, I want to appeal to state governments that have not taken time to do induction for their teachers because it is better and more factual when that child hears it from an expert mm -hmm. which will be a balanced view but if you go to hear from a friend he paints a picture of the number of whether cloud 10 or cloud whatever mm -hmm. that you are going mm -hmm. to attain the euphoria the mm -hmm. joy mm -hmm. the fun so and his, his uh, research has established that this information will best come from school teachers my concern is beyond Igbo, beyond marijuana. Yes. There are other drugs, and the drugs are expensive. They That's are. what they say. So how do they get, I mean, how do they fund? What are the experiences of parents whose children are addicted to this? How do they get funding? Um, you know, some, some of them are, are, 
you know, they, they sell what they have. They sell their phones, their computers. You know, sometimes they sell their parents' property, their cars and, you know, other property. Sometimes money that is used for school or for other things is diverted. Those who are addicted over the years, yes. are they treatable? Yes, it's a treatable. Oh, it it's it, yeah. Go ahead. No, it works. Treatment yeah. works. Okay. Yeah, the treatment works. works. Yeah, treatment works. It works. It works. Treatment works. Um, you know, but you know, the relapse rates are high. So within a year, at least uh, a third, you know, to almost a half will relapse. How much does it cost? I mean, averagely. Let's I mean, it cost it, to it. I mean, it depends on where. If you're going yeah. to the public sector, like at Cairo, it's like like three thousand naira a day. So that's not too bad. So for a month, it's like ninety k. If you go to some private places it could be anywhere between 20 and 40,000 naira a, a, a day and so and so you go go to the millions of naira when you're you're talking about typically treatment should be for at least 3 months that's what the research has said yeah, works no, no, no. you know and so you know for you to in, you know detox for one month get the bl uh, drug out of your system and then go for intensive counseling to give you problem solving skills coping skills you know, and you want to treat the whole person, not just the addiction. Mm -hmm. You know, you want to treat them medically, psychologically, so socially, mm -hmm. um, you know, interpersonally, and all, all these different aspects of the person. So we try to do personality inventories. We want to know what led that person to drugs. Some drug. people have underlying depression, underlying anxiety, underlying eating disorders, underlying psychiatric illness that they're using, poor sleep, pain you know, chronic pain, and they're using drugs to suppress it to suppress it and to make themselves feel better. So we want to know what are those perpetuating, precipitating factors. And, mm -hmm. and it, it varies from individual to individual. Well, recently, um, uh, some centers, well, so-called rehabilitation centers were raided. And you find out that some of them, presumably, uh, well, were said, and... Um, because I don't have the fact, but just like to speak to it, that some were drug addicts that were brought in by, you know, by families. And you find some of them shackled, you know, like you said, it's a whole, it's a total thing because obviously the ones that we saw in the pictures, you know, they does not make one happy. So what should, we're building a bridge of solution now. Um, what about rehabilitation centers? Do we have them in Nigeria? And yeah. if we have them, can they truly uh, live up to the expectations of getting these people uh, healed, so to speak? Yeah, we need more centers. You know, we don't have enough centers. And so that's, that's an issue for government-wise. We have eight for the 36 states, you know. So we should have at least government one in each state at the, at the very minimum. So we need more, more centers. You know, not everything will be done in the center. You have a, a role that the community can play, mm -hmm. you know, in terms of sensitization, in terms of advocacy, you know. So, um, you know, I definitely think that, that you know, more centers uh, is, a, is, is a good idea. Okay. Yes, Drugs and crime. <coughs> Mm. Drugs and crime. Of course, uh, internationally it is accepted that uh, uh, in most cases the immediate factor that predisposes the commission of any crime will be drugs. Uh, it, the, of course, under normal circumstances, no human being is likely to uh, be of harm to a fellow human being. Mm. But under the influence of drugs, he becomes a different person. Mm -hmm. And so he can do the unimaginable. Mm -hmm. And uh, just like you were talking about, uh, w once you become dependent, the drug takes priority in your life. And so whatever you can do to get that drug hmm. can be done. Hmm. From theft to killing to kidnap. As a matter of fact, is, uh, you, you might uh, have read that ransoms are not paid only in cash now. Okay. Yes. There are kidnappers that demand quantities of drug alongside the, the cash that you are coming to pay for okay. ransom. <laughs> so we uh, are to, we it, are tell, to, it, tells, yeah. it tells you that uh, the foundation, mm -hmm. because they, they need to be sustained. People who have been kidnapped, if they share their experiences with you, they tell you that 24 hours of the day that the kidnappers are there, they are, they are under drugs. So that puts them in a different class. And that's why they, are, they, they go ahead to insist that if you are, if you are coming with the cash, you must bring this quantity of drugs. Uh, those are the things that you don't hear. Yes. And we need to, yes. so that we know we need to know this that we nice. do have a serious issue 
right before yes. us as a yes. nation. Yes. Yeah, I, I was going to probably just uh, add some few lines to her response uh, mm -hmm. with the issue of uh, assessment centers mm -hmm. or maybe treatment centers mm -hmm. across uh, the federation. This, this has become very, very uh, uh, needful that uh, the government and um, maybe some of the public and maybe private institutions in the mm -hmm. country mm -hmm. should see it as a necessity. Now, because if you have this high population of people who are already abusing drugs or depending on drugs for their normal functionality, and you want to get them out of the, and you are already frowning at some of the some of the uh, permit me to use the word crude or maybe unorthodox methods mm -hmm. of treatment, right? And you do not in any way have tried to enhance, right? Or maybe try to improve or maybe create new centers or new, I mean, then that, means, that means something is wrong. To crucify these centers. Because mm -hmm. if you want to crucify the centers without an alternative provision mm -hmm. where the parents of these uh, uh, children or wards who are already dependent mm -hmm. on drugs and who are already, I mean, uh, uh, are displaying some other change in behavior, right? It's, it's totally really, I mean, a, 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 a misplacement of priority because mm -hmm. if you haven't provided an alternative solution for these people and you haven't made conscious effort to improve on the existing facilities that you have across the nation, right, where parents or maybe where people can, can just walk into mm -hmm. and get themselves assessed or treated, then I think we're, we're missing something. All right, right. so me, there's a me, need. Let me quickly you know. add that. Let me quickly add that. People who run this center should not exploit Nigerians. I mean, you, you can own a center. If you don't have the capacity, you can hire people experts. who have the Yes, hire mm. experts. Don't mm. exploit Nigerians and uh, begin to take advantage of mm -hmm. the challenge that oh, we yeah. have. Yeah. Yes. I and believe that every Nigerian should have like an annual mental and an uh, emotional health and an annual physical exam. That's when we catch children and adults that are vulnerable mm -hmm. early, mm -hmm. you know, so I think we need to have some sort of uh, screening every every year, you know, for, for every Nigerian, and that's what, that's what I'm advocating. Well, sir, everyone is vulnerable, and um, the, the issue is that we do have a serious problem that needs urgent, immediate action, and across board, talking to treatment, talking to reduction of availability, of the of the drugs and speaking to the fact that rehabilitation centers must exist so that those who are addicted and are still productive yeah. can quickly be treated. Be, be, yeah be treated yeah. but i think most importantly is um, i like the screening part so do I need a screening? Everybody, do everybody do needs do a, a quick a assessment of me. Do well, well, do you have enough sleep? Are you getting up to seven <laughs> to nine hours of sleep? <laughs> so, so serious issues here. But thank God we've been able to build some measure, of, put some blocks on the and solid nice. bridge. And hope that um, uh, next time when we do discuss this subject, because we'll, we'll, uh, on bridges, we'll bring it on in, you know, intermittently be and best of times mm -hmm. so that Nigerians are really... Uh, aware that we have a problem, but together we must tackle. And like Dr. Adaha says, <laughs> at least once in a year, get a mental health yeah. assessment. <laughs> All right. We'll be back again on Bridges and um, hoping that uh, the next time we'll be able to share some good news about reduction and having more rehabilitation centers, particularly at the rural areas where it is also happening. Yeah. Thank you for watching. Bridges of the back, same time next week. And thank you for being my guest on this pleasure. program today. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.